Welcome, this is MCG Tech with a custom hybrid CPU cooler. I designed this cooler with the intent of taking advantage of the strengths of both water and air cooling. I wanted to incorporate copper heat pipes to include phase change cooling. For those of you that are unfamiliar with how heat pipes work, there are actually a few drops of distilled water within the pipe. Once the pipe is heated, those droplets become gaseous creating water vapor. Meanwhile, I hope the addition of a radiator would help dissipate the heat more effectively. To add to this, by using two water blocks, each block would essentially only have to cool half of the total heat. That being said, as I built the cooler, a number of changes were made to accommodate for the components I had on hand. So without further ado, here is the process I went through to build it. The first change I made to my design was condensing both loops into one combined loop. I was able to do this by using a CPU and GPU AIO and simply removing the old brackets. For the foundation of the cooler, I will be using a damaged air cooler I found at my local recycling plant. To expose the three copper heat pipes, I pulled off a large portion of the aluminum fins. In order to improve thermal transfer between the water blocks and heat pipes, I will be using thermal pads to create a seal. Attaching the blocks to the heat pipes was a very tedious process for countless reasons. Primarily, the proximity of the blocks and awkward positioning created a lot of tension. Additionally, the thermal pads had pre-cut sections, which made them difficult to attach. To remedy this, I used clamps to hold them in place while I prepared to secure them. Once clamped, I piped JB Weld in the junction of the block and heat pipes. I repeated the process on the other block, then waited until the next day to pipe the other side. After waiting for the weld to dry, I removed the clamps and was relieved to see the blocks stayed in place. I then screwed in two radiator fans. Alongside the radiator fans, I also installed a fan on the remainder of the aluminum fins. I secured this fan by carefully tightening four zip ties. Installing the hybrid cooler was actually fairly simple, considering how I was able to use mounting gear from previous water cooling builds. My test system includes a Core i5-6500, 8GB of DDR4 RAM, and a 750 watt power supply. I didn't run into any clearance issues with the RAM, but all of the testing had to be done outside of a case. I started testing with the hybrid cooler. I used a program called CPU-Z to stress the Core i5-6500 and a program called CoreTemp to record the thermals. I opened CoreTemp 5 minutes prior to testing to allow minimum idle temps to be recorded. I then used CPU-Z to stress the CPU for 20 minutes. By the end of testing, the hottest core peaked at 37 degrees Celsius. Moving on to my reference cooler, I will be using a Cooler Master Hyper 212 EVO. This cooler is iconic due to its great cooling for its price. When compared with the recycled cooler, the 212 EVO has one additional copper heat pipe and more direct copper contact with the heat spreader of the CPU. With the 212 installed, I repeated the testing procedure. By the end of 20 minutes, the Core i5-6500 reached 42 degrees Celsius on its hottest core. To conclude, the addition of water cooling to the air cooler did substantially improve performance. In the future, I would like to do further testing in a case with the proper radiator support. Additionally, the 6500 only draws 30 watts, so finding an alternative higher power CPU would be ideal for finding this cooler's limits. That being said, this design was definitely a success on all fronts, from cooler idle temps to consistency underload. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like this video and subscribe. Also feel free to check out the rest of the content on this channel. Thank you for watching.